So I've looked at a lot of Stephen's work again lately, and I'd like to start with your early work on irregular verbs. And it's striking to me how much in this work you think like an economist. So some verbs are regular. You conjugate them with an ED. Others are irregular, right? You, you don't say get it. You say got. Now, how computationally efficient is that process? <laughs> uh, the, I think it taps two of the mechanisms that make intelligence possible. I mean, why, why would I spend a good chunk of my career uh, studying the minutiae of irregular verbs? Uh, I, I do love language. I love linguistic detail for its own sake. But I chose that topic because I thought it shed light on bigger issues of cognitive organization. Uh, so why do we have uh, 165 or so quirky exceptions like um, stride, strode, come, came, sing, sang, go, went, and so on? I mean, it just seems that there could be no rhyme or reason behind it. Uh, I think it's just a consequence of the fact that uh, we uh, memorize words, and that's one of the two mechanisms behind language. We uh, store by brute force, rote memory, arbitrary pairings between a sound and a meaning. The, um, the word uh, duck doesn't look like a duck or walk like a duck or quack like a duck, but I can use it to get you to think the thought of a duck because we and everyone in this room has memorized a, uh, a pairing between that sound and that meaning. Uh, we don't just blurt out words, but we also combine them into phrases and sentences using rules that allow you to predict the or compute the meaning of a combination from the meaning of the parts and the way that they're arranged. Those I, I, uh, are the two uh, mechanisms that make language possible. Uh, but there are some kinds of meanings where they can uh, compete over which system expresses a particular uh, concept. In the case of uh, regularity and irreg irregularity, we have two different ways of conveying the concept, uh, an action that took place in the past, or in the case of plurals like uh, mouse, mice, and rat, rats, uh, two ways of talking about more than one thing. We can memorize a uh, more or less independent word to convey the idea, like uh, uh, struck or sang, or we can apply uh, an algorithm to say something in the past tense, add ed to the end, and then we get walk walked. And because of the peculiarities of the history of a language, you can have that labor divided between the rule system, the algorithmic system, and the memory system. And it's the tension between those two systems that give rise to a lot of the quirkiness of language, including English irregular verbs. So when you did this, this was one of the first things to make you famous. Did you know in the back of your mind this was a kind of Hayekian argument? Because it seems to me the common verbs that we use a lot, those go irregular, and it's easy to remember them because you use them all the time. But the irregular verbs, so the regular verbs are ones that you don't use so often. And thus, again, you're economizing on information in this decentralized way. Yeah. Um, I, I don't know how... Uh, I don't know how well it, that analysis would work uh, across a range of... of um, zones of irregularity. So in the, it is certainly true that irregular verbs tend to be uh, common, and uh, which is kind of the bane of the language learner. You, you, you learn Spanish or French, and uh, all of the words that you use all the time, you've got to memorize the conjugations. Um, but the, and I think the reason for that is, uh, I might even uh, invoke Darwin more than, than Hayek, uh, namely that um, in the generation-to-generation -generation transmission process of an irregular verb, an irregular verb has to be memorized uh, be because by definition there is no rule behind it. The only way you know that the past tense of come is came is that you hear everyone else uh, use came. Uh, since memory thrives on frequency, the more often you hear something, the better you remember it. If any verb uh, declines in frequency and verbs become more or less fashionable for all kinds of reasons, then you could have a generation that never successfully masters it. They'll default to the all-purpose uh, ad ed rule, and then the verb will go from irregular to regular for that generation and all subsequent generations. And so you've got a, a, an erosion of the stock of irregular verbs as they get filtered through the minds of children memorizing them, uh, where it's the less frequent ones that tend to, to fall out of the language. So dreamt becomes dreamed, for instance. Dreamt becomes but dreamt dreamed. is prettier. It, it is prettier, and that's uh, one of the uh, reasons that irregular verbs do stay in the language. And one of the reasons that often lyricists and poets and novelists will prefer the irregular to the regular when, when there, there's a choice, strided versus strode, uh, strove versus strived, uh, hove versus heaved, 
is that they are, they're good words. They actually fit the f- phonological template for a standard word in the language, the kind of sound that you would use for uh, a nickname or a, a, a common word. And they are more euphonious uh, because they aren't assembled uh, in a kludgy way from uh, the verb stem and this this bit of detritus hanging on the end, this ed or, or, or s, this suffix, which is serviceable. It allows you to convey a message, but it makes the the sound of the word itself a bit clunky. And, and there are almost unpronounceable regular words like sixths or edited, where because you're sticking an extra bit on the end of a word, you're actually um, uh, messing up the nice contour of a standard word in the language. And that's another one of the tensions that over the history, course of the history of a language will kind of shape the balance of regular and irregular forms. So that is Hayekian in the, in the sense that um, no one planned the language to be optimal in satisfying one criterion. There are trade-offs, there are multiple tugs, pushes and pulls, and um, in a, a, as speakers, millions of speakers make little adjustments as they use the language, as kids learn the language, the language itself spontaneously evolves with some balance.